Hi, I'm Mike O'Shea, and I'm the Mental Health and Addiction Lead for the Northeast Local Health Integration Network. And I've been fortunate enough to have participated on the HCARD team pretty much from its inception. Um, this is a, a, a tremendous collaborative process with um, researchers, uh, knowledge users, knowledge experts uh, in the field of developmental services. Um, and primary care and um, it, it was a, a, a great opportunity to uh, share ideas, uh, share expertise um, and, and work in a really collaborative nature. Uh, one of the things I'm particularly proud of is the work that the HCAR team uh, put into the development of the ISIS uh, Atlas on primary care and adults with developmental disabilities in Ontario. This is a, a a tool that can be utilized by um, uh, planners uh, in health and social services. Um, and so it, it really is a practical tool. My name is David Carter Whitney. I, for seven years, I was the Assistant Deputy Minister of Social Policy Development at the Ministry of Community and Social Services. We do a lot of work as a ministry with people with disabilities. And I would say that we're exposed from time to time to health research. Often health research seems quite isolated from the social services sector. It treats people's interactions with their primary care physicians and the hospital sector or whatever. But it doesn't necessarily look at the context in which they, they are making their decisions and why they are there and what supports have led them to be there. As the Ministry of Community and Social Services, we're providing income supports, we're providing various uh, supports around people's behavior or medical employment needs a whole lot of things that are that that interact with the health system but isn't specifically health and it, this this project did a really amazing job of bringing those two systems together of letting us see what are some of the health impacts of the supports that we provide what challenges do we need to consider uh, and try to address in the way that we're structuring supports for individuals and how do we help push on the health system to do better as well for a population that against the overall population of Ontario is really small and yet they're a big user of health services. Right. The, the team engaged us really early right from the very outset and again as I mentioned often health research comes to us and it's done mm -hmm. and it may or may not feel very relevant to us what this project did was, it was actually the first time that we'd really married data about individuals who had, uh, who had uh, low income, they were on Ontario Disability Support Program, ODSP, with health data. And so it was innovative in terms of bringing that data together and giving us a picture of people that was different. But as the questions started to be formulated and the approach about what did we want to know, it wasn't just an approach from the what does the health system need to know. It, it asked in ways that made it very relevant to the social services sector as well. And uh, having an ongoing role both as the project was designed, as it, as it proceeded, and um, regular meetings where we discussed what was known and what did we want to do next, uh, made, meant that we, it really addressed areas of interest to us as a social services ministry. That, I think one of the things that was important about the project was the knowledge transfer elements, that it wasn't just research that found its way onto a shelf, that it uh, is research that in many ways has tried to be placed into hands that will use it, both in the healthcare sector and also at, with the Ministry of Community and Social Services, we had presentations to our partnership table, which brings together the agencies that provide supports, family groups, self-advocates, um, broader umbrella groups that so the people who have an interest in individuals with a developmental disability from the support side and we made them aware of the findings and have talked about the outcomes with them um, and it, it, I think it really validated their own experiences that there are challenges healthcare access and outcomes are really problematic for these individuals so again the the, it, it engendered a whole different discussion with that group, uh, which was really helpful. The, it also has uh, brought together different ministries. I've talked as, as the Ministry of Community and Social Services, but in fact the steering committee had the you know, policy leads from the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Children and Youth Services as well. So thinking about these issues 
across the government it was really important and, and it isn't something that we always do really, really well. So it was a helpful engagement to bring us together and let us influence each other a bit in our thinking and we're continuing to work at that in terms of the government strategies. Mm -hmm. Dialogue. Our meetings were interesting because we would have, a, we had a formal governance and we would report on the progress of the, of the research as data was being matched, how, how good a match had it been, what, was, what were some of the findings what knowledge transfer activities were happening, things like that. The meeting would end and often we would sit there and talk for another hour just about some of the findings and it didn't necessarily have a purpose but I think it helped again for the researchers to hear what kinds of things were the, was the research sparking for us and I think that kind of informal collaboration, again, that was, it's unique from my experience. Researchers who want to impact policy and have change, I think having that early conversation is important finding champions, people who want to learn. I think that there is a real appetite in government for evidence-based policy, that we know lots of things anecdotally, as I said, the, that we, we are given stories over and over about problems in the system, and we don't know how representative those stories are. And that becomes particularly problematic, again, for a population of 66,000 in, in an overall population of over 12 million. It's the needle in the haystack, right? So, having evidence to inform policymakers within government is really important. Bringing together the health system and the social services system is also really important and recognizing that broader context. I think that the being very deliberate about sharing that information and taking it out beyond the usual academic halls and publications but trying to drive that knowledge into whether it's medical schools or, uh, as I say, family groups and agencies and other groups that have an interest in a population, they have something to say and they can benefit from it if, the, if it's presented in a way that isn't overly academic but actually describes what is the finding in a way that can matter to them. It, it, it creates more of an impulse for change. I think it's important because when people become like medical doctors, they need to know like, the percentage of how people with disability can get like ill and how they can help us. I think it's really important because doctors need to know like how to give us people with disability service properly, treating us as people. They sometimes use like certain words that we probably won't really understand. Us with peace, people with disability, we know the most about our health. Mm -hmm. Yes, our parents are there, mm -hmm. but we would know the most about like what's happening to us rather than our parents or our caregiver. Mm -hmm. If they don't actually discuss what about health with disability, like with actual people with disability, how will they know how to take care of us and the needs we need to stay healthy? Because health is something that's really important. And, you know, we only live once.